Thoughts on Japan? About as bad as good as England golf gets is uh, is pretty neat summation, I would say. It's 15 minutes from Utrecht, which is just the most brilliant little student city in Holland. Like, I don't know. That's a 36 so for me. Like, if you're coming here, you have got to do 36. It's just a great. But this is why I was, I was like, I want to move to Utrecht. That night. I was like, this is because it's mm. it's just a great, you know, student city, isn't it? They just like walk around the road and go to a bistro, and and go and have a nice bit of dinner, and they chat. Go to a bistro. So if I was going to give a recommendation to anyone listening to this who is planning a trip to the Netherlands in and around the sort of last week of October, just before the clocks change, Sam decided that we get uh, get away from Utrecht in the car at about seven six fifty five a.m. I had assumed there was daylight at eight a.m. and it was pitch black. I, I question <laughs> Kenemar for allowing us the even thought of teeing off at eight a.m. because for those of you that we haven't made it clear enough yet. At 8 a.m. in Holland, in the last week of October, the sun isn't rising, it's pitch black. They're, they're on an hour further into summertime than we are, and they're not too far further south. So they are, yeah. Like, it's, like, it's like we'd lost the sun overnight. It's like yeah. it stopped working. I genuinely thought it had. The camera was like, maybe something is really afoot here. Mirrorless camera, and that's in here. It's not a DS file. Have you, take, have you put your ND filters away? Well, what's nice. I wouldn't use the ND filters this morning. Well, no, I changed it from an ND64 to an ND4 because of. To the jar over service. I think Kenema for me, well, what, what do you think Kenema I would like say all Mario? of these I would say certainly Kenema and Hague uh, it's almost impossible to draw a comparison I've certainly not played a link to anything like the Hague I'm pretty sure it's well, I find it very hard to draw too many comparisons with Kenema gun to my head I'd probably say it has some shades of Birkdale but not in the same way there's I remember Sam vividly Sam walking around midway through the back, the back line just saying this is a Kenema scent <laughs> I don't know about you, mate, but I just think this is like every inch as good as Royal Birkdale. <laughs> has to be. <laughs> the Birkdale one I could possibly see. I mean, I've only played Birkdale once off winter tees and in the, in the bleak midwinter, and it was great fun, but I can't can't maybe speak to the comparisons there it's as not, much it's as not you a, that's, That you... is not a good comparison of mine, is, but it is, is a, okay. it's a very honest Lynx golf course, Kenema. Kenema is almost... There's a lot of bold land stuff going on there. The first three starting were just like yeah. mind blown. I was like, There's bloody hell, what a, I honestly didn't think we were going to top the band. It's there like, is a, a staggering, I suppose, dunescape. And they would call, I, I think we could probably, well, I, I would go on record and say, I don't think either of them are probably true links in, in, the, in the truest sense of the word. They all were very sandy, they were all, um, you know, firm. But I wouldn't say they were probably true links. But even um, Christian at Kenemar said, like, for me, like, I would describe this not as a lynx, as a, but as a, they called it, what did they call it, a, a dunescape or duneland. Mm. Because there's, there's huge, big sand dunes, and huge, big mounding, and, and the, the topography was amazing. And it's very dramatic, which I think is where the shades of Bergdahl comes from, because Bergdahl is a dramatic golf course. Mm. There's no getting away from that. And um, Kenemar had every inch of that drama. Um, as you kind of work your way around those dunes and through them and over them and um, they have 27 holes we played uh, 18 of them Sam can you illuminate me on the 18 yes, so we, we played, played the B and C loop which is a bit weird so the Colt so I think Canada was the first um, it was the first course that Colt was uh, involved in over there um, 1927 uh, he, he built 18 but I think he left sketches for more so B and C there's three nines for the other one was obviously called A, which is the more recent nine. So that's like a Frank Penning build. I think there was quite a bit of that was predicated on some of the sketches that Colt had left. 
I, I'm reliably informed and based on what we saw, some of the A looked mm. brilliant as well. Yeah. I think B and C is regarded as maybe like the, the real authentic. Yeah. When they play the Dutch Open there, bit of a mixture. they play like a bit of a mixture of mm. all three and I think they use pretty much exclusively A and then use a concert of B and C as well. So yeah, they, the, the names, I think they're, they're named after the club member that was that was kind of instrumental in, in, in helping Penning. The, I think B is called Penning and I think C is called Colt. I might be wrong on that. Um, we, yeah, we played B and C. Um, one is like, is an interesting one because it's, um, you know, we, I think we all have got a little bit of a penchant for, for teeing off where your backswing could hit the clubhouse, which mm. is like our, like our home club at Blackwell. Um, from the B course at Kenema, you know, if you took a really wide backswing and, and, and swayed backwards, you could have you could have taken out a window. Mm. The window to the snooker room, actually, because there were guys in there playing snooker. It's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing clubhouse, actually. And then you tee off, and it looks it looks very benign. Well, not benign. It looks like a long par four, but it doesn't look. You, you, it certainly doesn't look like what it is when you get there. Got down there. I thought I was going to be. I thought we were going to lose somebody in the dunes in the first hole. It looks quite a roll, flat rolling. Yeah. First hole. Great you're visual down there deception. And you're like, Shit. There's like. 30 foot you're falling into these the land is way there's loads more movement in these holes than pretty much most of the link stuff that you'll see mm. in in England or mm. in Scotland and it's like well, Holland's known as a very flat country yeah, yeah. well that's it I remember playing Canada and just thinking wow this is like amazing like the dramatic sort of land forms and how much change and elevation there is such wildly different topographies to anything I've ever played on before mm. but Kenema was just yeah uh, just a it felt like a real honest links test but still with plenty of drama and that's maybe i think why you guys mentioned the birkdale comparison Sunshine. Sunshine. i stick my head out the window i'll fly wherever the wind blows moon walking over the rainbow that's just where i'll be yeah, I taste the sweet life sunscreen Cause I shine so bright Only where I not to live like That's just how I be Ooh, Only good vibes my way Ooh, Every day I can feel the sunshine I see the clouds all drift away The hard nights pay no attention to hindsight Learn to let it go Lately, I feel like a million pounds of good luck and the freedom Blessed by the air that I'm breathing On and on it goes Only good vibes my way Ooh, Every day I can feel the sunshine These things are magic. They are magic. Sunshine. 
Which we then rushed on to Norway. Which we had about, I think we had 11 minutes to get to, and it was a 20-minute journey to where <laughs> Google Maps felt it was, and it turns out the golf club was at least another mile and a half further <laughs> yeah, down the road. So we, yeah. were, we so, were totally fucked. I know, we were, we were up against it, weren't we? Um, still digesting the glipper as we got in the car and just pedal down. I've driven as quickly and as carefully as I could. I mean, Sam definitely wanted me to go quicker, but I just was sure I was going to, you know, spread a cyclist across the windscreen if I wasn't careful. <laughs> but yeah, we got there. No cyclists were harmed. All fine, safe. First thoughts on Nordbike? Well, it was funny, wasn't it? We drove in, you're like, wow, this is like crazy sand. It's like, are we on Mars or something? Yes. Yeah, it's like Martian. I, it was genuinely... I mean, it's ridiculous. It was like a, an alien landscape. It was. Can you explain why? What do you mean when you say that? You get out of the car and you, you climb, up, climb up a hill to where the clubhouse is in the first tiers. And then you look out across the dunes. But this isn't like... We've talked about the, the, the dunes at Kenema. They're, they're lovely and grassed and, and These are brilliant. everywhere, so it's just, as far as the eye can see. Yeah, it's just like... But these dunes are... as literally as far as you can see and it's all sand with like a tiny bit of marrow. they're bare aren't they and like, they're dynamic apparently. bare sand yeah yeah, yeah they're, so they're you know like, what this meant dynamic sand dunes I yeah they move don't they so like you have these huge i don't want to say sand scrape because that almost has a connotation nowadays of like something that's been almost artificially constructed but they're like natural sandy kind of scrapes if I did, if you drop a random street viewer into Nordvike Golf Club and give them 30 seconds to work it out on TikTok as to where they are, they ain't finding it. Like, you could have been anywhere. You could have been absolutely anywhere. There's nothing to see apart from that quite um, anonymous... Sort of, was it like a TV tower or like a, a, a radio mast? It was something to do from like the Soviet era or something, wasn't it? Now, the other thing that was explained to me about Nordvike was that it had shades of Formby in so much as there's pure links holes and then you go through periods where you go in and out of the trees at the top so like you yeah. said of pine trees and I think that's a fair assessment in terms of that's a very noticeable characteristic of Formby um, and it's noticeable a Nordvike um, the stuff up there is like way up the top and you kind of have to as the course is rooted Nordvike is the only one that's not a cult course therefore it's not sort of just been iterated around a sort of golden age layout. It is a, it is a much more recent layout. So Nordvik is the most, uh, most recently built on Linksland in the Netherlands, and probably will probably remain that that way for a long time. Would be my guess. Even though you could put about 30 courses uh, next door. Now, uh, it is a newer routing. Therefore, you, you kind of go through. I would say the challenges of that are you go away from the house and go right up to the top and then work your way back down after nine and then you repeat that same exercise again and I think partly to the that's partly where the, the the feeling of like it felt like quite a long walk it was the second round of the day and you have to it's quite it's quite tricky land to try and scale isn't it mm. that that sort of out and back twice um, it's out and back and out and up yeah yeah it's, it's, you it's crazy of, I'd say the fifth and probably the thirteenth are probably like the highest points on the course. Yeah, and that yeah. created for me like a few like feelings of like fatigue. You got cameras, you got fourteen clubs. It was like, oh god, you're playing back again. Most stuff's long, um, but I think the quality I'd look at it that was the greatest was like the individual merit of each of the golf holes. But because of some of the maybe some of the walk in mm. and some of the walks between the holes broke that up when I look back at it in hindsight I'm like yeah the quality of the individual golf holes is extremely high yeah mm. yeah it just didn't flow which I, 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 quite as well as somewhere like a Depan or a, or a Kenemar even and I think that's something that you just see quite commonly with, with more recently built courses is it's, the focus is on can I make the best 18 individual holes maybe less time on the flow of it but that is something that as far as we're aware you know yeah, the club are aware the club of that, are, club are you know, they've got a master plan if they can get things through with the environment agency and the local government um, and, the, and the work they're doing with um, Mackenzie and Ebert. They've got some really exciting plans on well, it's as far a great as the routing golf course. concerned. It's yeah. a great golf course great today. Potential. But if they can if they can execute like the, the, the plans that they want to do and really kind of 
when you play with Martin, you realize just the, the sheer passion, love, intensity for the place, for the local environment. Wow, that's really impressive. They're just excellent colours, aren't they? Yeah, they're good. Then went in like tw half an hour, I think, into Den Haag. Checked into the hotel. Pitched up a nice hotel. Yeah. You faffed around, did your usual thing. Rung everyone in your phone book for 20 minutes. We stood <laughs> outside waiting. We all pretended it was a joke. And then I eventually had to go inside and ring your room and say, Bruce, this is a bit rude. And then we came and met Willem. And we had a Willem again, just lovely straight in lovely continental vibe cobbled streets people sat outside um you know just every bistro is packed you're like an evening in den haag i mean look we're going to talk about food and stuff but like sitting down and willem gave us a load on like um dutch custom didn't they just customs and like cultural stuff and then took us for a tour like a walking tour so around the city so and you look at it and you're like yeah, nice. There's some lovely government buildings there, but there's nice independent stuff, independent restaurants. You're like, if this was in Britain, I'd just be staring at yet another fucking Primark. Oh no, we've overcooked it. Oh no! <laughs> Conning clicker, Harks. I think this is the best logo. I'd agree with you, actually. Conning clicker. Conning clicker. Conning clicker. Conning clicker, hargish. So we should cover the nomenclature, to use your phrase, Bruce, around, because all these places have S-C-H-E on the end of their names. Yeah. Previously in Dutch yeah, yeah. language, the S-C-H-E on the end of everything basically was to say of somewhere. So it was like, Conning clicker is essentially royal of the Hague. Royal Hague, yeah. I, I don't think I can say I've, I've, I've been on golfing land like that it's just bonkers i mean this is the oldest dutch club but i think you know the cult layout there must have been sort of moved around a bit because it's like there is flamboyance and there's flair and then this was just downright like that it felt like you were on a mountain top course but there was such enormous undulation but stretched out but but not over a mountain yeah. it was just within the hole so like it felt like i should have been at the top of a mountain by the end of it but I was just where I started mm -hmm. yeah you're not going to get many even lies no, or any even no. lies or flat lies you're almost just playing I mean, across I'd, massive caverns and, they, 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 and then so descend dramatic. and then summit yeah. to another like, reasonably flat area and it's just um, it's classified as a lynx I wouldn't say yeah. it, it, it has there's some dunes and stuff and you do definitely encounter bits of that land but it's it's so far from being anything you you would normally describe as a lynx course if you looked at east coast scottish lynx courses it's it's, it's world apart yeah, yeah. No, no. and i said like the first hole just to give an example of what, what i'm trying to talk to try and say really apparently really poorly but i would say the first hole is kind of a it's a long part well it's a short part five but it's the long hole straight down you must drop 25 to 30 meters, roughly. Mm. Drop, elevation change from T to green. And the second hole is almost the complete reverse of that, where you basically scale back up that, so you're back where you start. But you almost go 50 meters down, then 50 meters up, then another 30 meters up. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the third hole, which you then kind of, where you just started on the first, there's a T box, T box there. You play to a green, which is probably a, 
five or ten meters above you but you've got to go over a huge valley like massive valley that you have to walk um and you play to a little bit below you and then you, and back then you up. play back up the hill and then, and then four the is 220 just, plunging downhill another enormous drop downhill and it's just like the most severe topography i i don't think it would be possible to route a golf course now on anything that's that's more undulating than that well yeah let's let's dive into the history because it is quite an interesting one really i think um although the conning clicker however however you want to pronounce it royal hay golf club was founded back in the last decade of the 19th century they weren't playing golf on that site they were playing golf um i think probably close you know somewhere else around the hague and that site was actually built by colt allison and morrison in the 30s i believe for a businessman very very successful wealthy man that clubhouse i believe with his with his home and he then fled the netherlands i think presumably sense of foreboding about um, maybe the coming sort of nazi occupation and so on and then royal hay golf club took over the course that had been laid out i think mostly by allison i think holt and allison were working together at that time but that's essentially the history of it yeah Royal Hague now is very green, mm. perfectly manicured. It was, it was probably the most manicured of the courses we played, I, w- I would say. And all the surrounding was, was verdant. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Were, there were dunes around and stuff. But they were all very but green. they were grass covered, they were verdant. Yeah. You know? Whereas you look back at these old photographs of some of these holes and it looked exactly how Nordvike looked, which was broken ground Only and more sand. sand. Only more like, of the It's stuff. almost like there was just little patches of grass they put greens and patches of grass they put teas and it was like it looked like islands of, of grass whereas it's obviously changed a lot over the years but it did have a very nord white feel originally. Wild elevation change. Unbelievably challenging. Certainly we were playing from the back tees again which was you know, it's a long course off the backs anyway, but coupled with elevation change means it plays significantly further than the yardage does. There's a few banked fairways as well, yeah, aren't there? Banked fairways, Just ball runs the run. out. There's there's huge fronts to the greens and huge runoffs. Like as as big, some of the bigger some of the ones at Nordvike, it really demanding. Like I I remember hitting shots that were of the of the finest order that I can hit the golf ball, and I couldn't get on putting surfaces for holes mm. holes on the run. And I was like. You, that was like the best you hit it all the time. Hundred percent was the best. Like I, I posted, I probably posted a half decent number at Eindhoven, but hey, guys, like I think I would have been fighting to break eight, mid eighties. Like I remember hitting yeah. shots and just thinking, Jesus, this is penal. This is really tough. Like you've got to be on your game. We were stood on um, the fourth tee, in fact, with our host Willem, and um, we were talking about the choice of tees and how it, you know you can go back quite a bit on some of these white tees and he said yeah you know I I play off three off the yellow course I get four shots off the white course I get ten I was like Christ yeah. like he's like yeah it's like six shots difference for me plays off like a WHS of three so and, it's uh, tough yeah but then where do you go beyond tough well you know we've already said monster elevation change I'd say the greens are you know if, if Eindhoven have these wonderfully understated, charming um, cult green sites. Haig has these kind of, they're, they're almost on steroids, you know, they are so beefed up with the, with the runoffs and it's so potent. It's like, if we, if we played that first, it would have been almost over-facing playing well. Yeah, I think there were, in, in the Hague, there were, it was, for me, it was definitely a course that you had to know before you played it. There were bits of the greens that you had to go for, and there were bits of the fairways you had to go for. You could be on, you could be on the fairway but on the wrong side and completely like no shot. Or, you know, you could, you could put yourself in onto a green that. I mean, there was a couple of greens that you got on. I think 10, 11 might have been one of them that par four that you got on. Is like there is it's it's a mathematical impossibility to two putt from here.
Good touring. Harry Cole. Lesson to us all. What a guy.